Hello everyone and welcome back to more Wind Waker. Uh, last time we finished the Wind Temple and we decided that it's time for us to start collecting uh, pieces of the Triforce. Now what that's going to mean is uh, that we need to go through our charts, uh, find these... Um, Triforce charts that we, we don't really have yet. There's a couple of Triforce charts and then the uh, pieces of the Triforce are scattered around uh, the Great Ocean. Um, there's also a few pieces of heart to collect and uh, other little things like that. So I hope you guys are ready for a nice long episode full of action and we're going to start it off by um, transporting ourselves with the Ballad of Gales. And we're going to head over to the Tower of the Gods. And like I said, there's going to be some pieces of heart that we need to collect. More treasure charts that are available to us. And then, um, like I said in the last episode, we are going to start collecting the Triforce shards themselves. So, uh, there's going to be a lot of traveling and a lot of uh, looking at my map in this episode. So I will do some, some cutting uh, so we're not getting too bored. So uh, let's, let's get started with that. Thorned Fairy Island is our destination, and what we are here to get is that treasure right there. And uh, Thorn Fairy Island is a few, a couple quadrants east of the Tower of the Gods. So we're gonna go ahead and fish out this treasure. What do we have here? Why, yes, it is a piece of heart. And as you can see, we are one heart container short of being full. All right, let us move on to the next. Uh, our next stop is going to be Paw Print Isle. And so we're just gonna go ahead and warp to Dragon Roost and sail over from there, so I will see you at Pop and Dot. Now we have been here before, um, so this is not a new location for us. However, uh, with being equipped as we are now, there is something new available to us here. Uh, if, I think this is the place, if you recall, where um, there is a large population of Choo Choo. I believe the, uh, the guy at uh, Windfall Island tells you that there is a lot, a, lot of, a lot of Choo Choo here where he collects his jelly. And what we're trying to do, what we're going to try to do is we, we have to hook shot now that we have the hook shot, we can actually hook shot to uh, to those tiny islets next door. If we could just get a little bit closer, we can hook shot, oops, hook shot our way. Um, let's see if I can. No, not, not quite reaching is it all right so i think the best thing to do is going to be to get on the boat and uh hook shot from the boat so that's what we're gonna do let's do that
So we have successfully made it up here to the strange looking tree. We are going into that hole. Um, but first there are rupees here. It's not much. Um, but why not? Got nothing else to do. All right, let's drop down, and I believe this is one of those annoying uh, uh, caves with the enemies. You have to kill the enemies, and uh, they keep, there's like waves of enemies. You remember this? You you remember the the other one that we've done, like this one. Uh, this one is much harder than the previous one uh, because of wizard robe. So wizard robes are annoying. As you all know. Um, easy enough to start. This idiot seems to be spawning in the same spot every time. Oh. Uh, yeah. Alright, so. Whew. I'm trying to... Well, here come the chews. Electric chews. At that. That's gonna be a pain. Ugh. The trick is to let's get rid of the keys. Let's see if we can. Um... Oh come on! Get rid of the keys and then just focus on. Nope. Didn't mean to. I don't want. Oh, he's just gonna keep doing that. We have to get rid of. We have to get rid of him. And if I could just, please, Z target the guy I'm trying to Z target. This is the thing. You guys have already known that this annoys me. Um, where you're targeting a guy, and you don't actually hit target the guy you're aiming for. Freaking! There we go. Target. Got him. Continuing to do the same thing. There we go. Never gonna get that item orb up there, are we? Easy does it. That is it. Is that it? Yes, that's it. And now we can focus on these idiots. Careful with the sword. Don't want to get electrocuted. Alright, easy does it. And done with this wave. Of course, there's more. Come on, come on. If you can prevent... Well, never mind. I was going to say, if we can prevent him from dancing, then he can't... Oh, the pea hats. Come on. If you, if you prevent the dancing animation, uh, then they won't... And they won't be able to, uh... I did not aim for you. I did not target you. The arrow was over. See, the arrow is over the wish rope, yet somehow, for some reason, it switches mid-targeting, like this, again. See, the arrow is over him. You can see, you can clearly see the arrow is over the wish rope. This is, you know, I would say this is not fun. Uh, that's what I would call this, this kind of nonsense. And it's not fun because the targeting doesn't work. It, I mean, I don't mind difficult, but don't give me, don't give me difficult and also the targeting doesn't work, you know? Let's, there we go. Come on! Missed, 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 missed. 
These guys are just... It's ridiculous how relentless. There's no point. <laughs> I say there's no point in killing these idiots because they're just gonna get... Is he dead? Yeah. One down. Is that another? Another down? No, no he's about to... Ah, oh, he spawned! Gah! Oh, it's gotten worse. And now there's Moblins involved. Nope. I think this is going to be the best strategy not to move from this spot. I think that's going to do it. I'm not sure though. Who cares about this guy? Nobody. Nobody cares. Is that it? Oh, there's one more. Perfect. Ugh. Let me tell you, that is annoying. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to reach any of those. Unfortunately, those um, item orbs, but whatever. Let's get what we came for and move on with our lives. Treasure chart. It better be a good one. Cause this totally wasn't worth it. I kid, I kid, it was totally worth it. Um Let's open this guy up. Alright. Well, let's move on, yeah? Our destination is Two Eye Reef. Two Eye Reef. And, um, as you can see, it's all the way at the south of uh, the map. So we're going to warp probably to uh, Outset uh, and sail east from there uh, to Eye Reef. See you guys in a bit. So here we are, Two-Eyed Reef. I don't remember if we have actually done one of these yet. Um, I think there's six of them in total. Uh, and they're shaped like, um, like uh, the inside of dice. Um, and I think that's why there are six of them. But anyway, there's... Uh, at nighttime, there's always little treasures in here. And, you know, if you. Usually. The treasures. The big treasures are going to be on the outside, I think. Of the reef itself. But I think this one is on the inside. Which is going to be a bit of uh, an annoyance. 
because there's cannon ships and there's also cannons embedded into the uh, rock wall itself. Uh, so I need to find out if we leave the the big shiny, we'll come back. There it is. So let's circle back around. It's definitely on the inside. All right, this uh, the fast sail that changes the wind with you. It's probably the greatest gameplay change from the first from the original to this HD remake in my opinion it, it really it really makes a huge difference to me at least um because before you just had to keep changing the wind every time you wanted to go anywhere and, and if you're facing the exact opposite direction of where you want to be, then you have to change the wind direction. Oops, missed that money. No big deal. Just pick it up now. Uh, yeah, you just, uh, you'd miss, uh, what am I trying to say? You'd have to, yeah, just change the wind every time you wanted to go somewhere. If you missed the entrance to one of these reefs, then what you had to do Let's change the the one direction every single time. Uh, can you quit going in circles, boat? Take care of this guy first, I guess. Mr. Cannon, cannon boat there just wants to go in circles. Uh, there's got to be more. There it is, and. You are, and oh, you're not dead. Uh huh. And that makes a treasure chest appear at the top of one of the two little rock things. So let's head up there and see what's up there. Yeah. So I'm cutting out the part where I foolishly tried to hookshot uh, to the treasure chest from the water itself. Uh, it doesn't work. Just so you know, this seems to be the way you do it. Uh huh. All right, treasure chart. And with that, we are done with Two-Eyed Reef. Let's uh, change the wind so we can float back closer to our boat so we don't have to swim too far and drown. I've done enough drowning in this playthrough to last me a lifetime. And let's figure out where we're gonna go after that. Diamond Step Island is the destination, and the destination is Diamond Step Island. Far, far, far to the west, and a few quadrants north as well. It's a long uh, trip, so I'm not going to waste your time uh, and make you watch me sail all the way over there. So, with the magic of editing, I will actually meet you over there. The destination is off in the distance, a Diamond Step Isle, and this isle, island thing, houses a, uh, a particular item that really stumped me the first time I played this game. Um, you'll see what I mean, well I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you what we're doing here. We are here for the ghost ship chart. Um, and the reason this stumped me was because I always thought, um, that, uh, you know, you just, I, I couldn't figure out how to get into the ghost ship. And try as I might, I just 
couldn't figure it out. Uh, it turns out you need the ghost ship chart to actually be able to uh, access the ghost ship. Uh, which is kind of strange, I guess, in a way. Uh, but kind of not strange at the same time. But anyway, I, I just kept I kept trying to go into the ghost ship and uh, you just kind of sail right through it, you know, you don't nothing actually happens. But once you have the ghost ship chart, you're actually allowed access to it. Um, so that's what we're here for because the ghost ship actually has something we need. So that's why we're doing this one. So let's go ahead and ooh, blue chew. Right. Anyway, let's go ahead and go inside. I'm going to finish cutting the grass, see if there's anything important here. And we'll go inside. Now, the inside of that Diamond Step Grotto, I guess you can call it. That's what I call it. Diamond Step Grotto. Is, um, it looks like the uh, insides of a ruined ship uh, I don't know maybe the, maybe the dime the the island itself is it's kind of in a ship shape isn't it so maybe it's just a ship that was stranded here and kind of nature grew around it I don't know but basically there are a bunch of uh, these uh, warp jars all over the place and uh, the trick it's it's like a maze in fact it's not like a maze it is a maze um you break open the the top uh i like to use the hammer um as you guys know you can use bombs as well or you can actually burn the um burn the uh what am i trying to i can't i can't think and play at the same time can i um, burn, burn them with arrows or a stick. Um, but yeah, basically the, the gist of it is to break open the jars and make your way over and not get lost. There are, uh, I believe, enemies in here. So you just gotta be a little bit careful. Oh yeah, there they are. Floor masters. <clears throat> They're, you know, annoying, but nothing we can't handle, so let's take care of these guys and move on. Okay, so the next pot... The next warp jar that we're going to go into is, I believe, this one. <laughs> one of these. Uh, let's, okay, let's go here. It's not the end of the world if you go in the wrong one, you just have to go back and try again so my recommendation is I mean I guess you're watching if you're watching and you're gonna use this as a walkthrough um, you're uh, you're seeing which one is the right one but the the trick I guess would be if you're doing it blind if you if you're ever gonna do this again and you don't remember which one it is don't break them all open leave them closed go into one if it's the right one uh, then move on, but if it isn't, then at least you know which one you have already tried, and which one you haven't tried. Um, which, of course, is uh, the opposite of what I'm going to do right now, because I think, I'm pretty sure it was this one. So, do as I say, not as I do, and I'm, yes, pick the right one. It's not a bad maze, it's not super long, by any means. Um, but it's nice to get it right on the first try. And there it is, the ghost ship chart. I'm um, getting out of here is as easy as just jumping down 
from here to the uh, to the original part, the starting off point. And let's open it up as soon as we get out, so we I can show you. Um, here we go. And ghost ship chart. There it is. Okay, so here we see uh, the phases of the moon. We are in the lower left. It's shining blue. Um, I mean, that's not where we are. That is the phase of the moon we're in. Crescent moon facing left. So we need it to be one past full moon. Because as you can see, bomb isle is half moon. Uh, mother and child isle, um, the five one, uh, Orion's belt, uh, the uh, the one that was destroyed, the island that was destroyed. You remember that one? Um, Moon Isle and then Diamond Step. Of course, those are <laughs> those are all the official names. Uh, and there you can see that's the phase of the moon that we're in, and you can. Um, actually just go to the spot where the ship is the ghost ship is going to be next um, so if we if we wanted to we could just sail to the next island in the rotation or uh, which is what I'm gonna do because it's a better idea it's faster go to an island like we're in now where you know that the ghost ship is gonna come and just uh, continuously change, play the song of passing, and change it from night to day, and then day to night. Um, and just do it a bunch of times. Keep checking the moon until the ghost ship appears. So that's gonna take it's a few days worth of of time changing, of uh, manipulating the. Uh, of manipulating time so you can see we're uh, one phase closer to getting into the the ghost ship so I will see you when it's time we are uh, in the correct time and you know it's right because there, there's gonna be a uh, there's always a thunderstorm and lightning when the ship is in your quadrant and there it is now we're just gonna sail right into it. That's that's what you do when you have the uh, the ghost ship charge. You you sail into the ghost ship and you are inside. And it's as simple as that. Otherwise, if you uh, if you try to uh, sail into it without the chart, uh, if you remember, I think it just disappears and you just go right through it. Nothing happens. So there's the ladder we want. There's uh, the lanterns of the pose. So we know that there's gonna be pose. And there's a little beam of light over on the right, so you know that's what we're gonna have to use against these guys. And I can uh, I can also tell you from memory that there's gonna be a Stalfos in here. Um, and yeah, let's step on this creepy floor. And I th oh, that I did not remember. That I did not. Oh, so, okay, so that's where the Stoffels come from. I thought the Stoffels just came uh, naturally, but no. They, they are actually summoned by the Wiz Robes. We're just gonna... Uh. Yeah, th this kind of throws a, a wrench in the plan. I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, well, he's dead. Oh, and the the Poe, he uh he went into the light all on his own. How friendly of him! Uh, don't touch me. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. That's one Poe down. And if we can, I don't think the the light hurts the Stoffels at all. So they're not like Reeds. Not like the the sun hurt the Reeds either, but. So we throw the bomb. I don't think that's close enough. It is. It is close enough, actually. Bam. And we just kill the Stoffels as we already know how to do. And that's it. That is the ghost ship. 
big bad scary ghost ship. Hmm. Not, not too too bad. So we go here and we are going to grab the very important item that is hidden here. We have collected our first Triforce Shard. We need seven more to complete the Triforce. And we are being ejected from the ghost ship. And if I'm not mistaken, I am not 100% sure, but uh, I don't think the ghost ship will ever appear again. So, now th that's a little bit weird. How did the Triforce Shard end up in the ghost ship to begin with? I don't know. That's, that's something interesting. Uh, for those of you who enjoy uh, uh, crafting theories. But anyway, as you can see, we have collected the one Triforce shard from the ghost ship. There are more still that we need to find. And um, the so some of them are already ready for us to discover, right? But some of them are hidden by charts. And we cannot read those charts because, uh, for whatever reason, they're written in a way that we can't decipher them, I guess. Um, so unfortunately, we need to pay Tingle to decipher those charts. So it's important that you guys have, if you guys are playing along, that you guys have a ton of money in order to continue with this part of the quest. But um, I think we're gonna be getting close to cutting it here. Uh, there is still a lot to do, a lot of Triforce shards to collect, a lot of Triforce charts to collect and get deciphered. So we're going to take care of that in the next episode. There's also a few more things that we're gonna do uh, so stay tuned and uh, thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again soon for the next episode of uh, Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. See you guys next time.